this planet is our only home. That thin layer of a few miles of atmosphere is where our whole being exists. And we're stressing it out. We have to take care of it. This is our home. What we have done to it and what we will do to it affects every living thing, everything. The planet itself is not as fragile as you might think, but its ability to protect the human species that is its inhabitant is limited. And if we allow that environment to be destroyed, if we allow our atmosphere to become full of pollution, if we allow the forest to be deforested, we'll be faced with floods and droughts, unhealthy air, and the human species will go away. Climate change is on the minds of everyone, everywhere. From the mountains to the sea, change has come. Glaciers are retreating and disrupting the patterns of glacier-fed streams. Monsoons are no longer predictable. The sea has taken entire villages. They may not know why it's happening. They just know it is. Now the people, because they see, they feel their lives have been affected so much, it's not somebody's problem, it's their problem. It's not the problem of the future, it's the problem of today. We have now entered a whole new geological epoch, the Anthropocene, Anthros for human, where we, seven billion people, multiplied by the industrial metabolism we represent, constitute a geological force of change at the planetary scale. So we're starting to see a situation where the planet is responding back in unexpected ways. The accelerated melting of Arctic ice is one example, outbursts of methane. We see it with Hurricane Sandy. We see it with sea level rise. We see it with crops that don't behave the way they used to. And the world is full of uncertainty because we can't count on the patterns that we used to. Rising greenhouse gas emissions are the biggest foe to our planet. It's coming from industry, energy and transportation, our homes and businesses, and unsustainable practices in forests and farms. This is the scientific nightmare, that we put pressures on a system that has for so long time buffered and dampened change. And the nightmare that we're seeing planet Earth going from being a friend to a foe and reinforcing change. While humans are causing climate change, climate change is affecting far more than just humans. I would unfortunately have to explain to Mother Earth as my patient that you're not only sick, but you're actually subject to multiple diseases at the same time. Many of your organs, which are not only absolutely vital to your stability, but they're also entirely interconnected, are put under multiple pressure. It's not enough to deal with one symptom. We need to recognize that we need to deal with climate change, ecosystems and biodiversity, the oceans, the stratosphere, air pollution, in the same time. With so many challenges facing our planet, it will take big initiatives that net big results. Someone who invests in a promising technology, or an engineering feat, or the protection of diverse ecosystems. That's what the Global Environment Facility does. It's why we exist. We are among the first in the field. I mean, we have two decades of, of, of good experience under our belt. GF is the, really, the largest and the most known entity working on um, biodiversity conservation and providing the largest money. We're like a magnet that attracts talent, ideas, uh, exchanges of technologies, processes, and, and, and knowledge. In our short history, we have witnessed great changes, the accelerating pace at which the planet's forests, oceans, and species are being compromised has been met with impressive successes across the Jeff Focal areas. Sometimes the Jeff acts with long-range strategic goals in mind. Sometimes the need is more immediate. All along the Hindu Kush, the Himalayan glaciers are melting at an alarming rate, forming massive glacial lakes that could burst at any moment. It's called a glacial lake outburst flood, or GLOF, 
It is one of the most feared of all natural disasters in mountain villages, capable of destroying everything in its path without warning. In the Kingdom of Bhutan, Lake Tortomi is just one of thousands of recently formed glacial lakes. At over 5,000 meters, it is a ticking time bomb waiting to burst. But with the help of a Jeff-funded team of engineers, glaciologists, and hundreds of Bhutanese workers, the lake level was successfully lowered by removing rocks and debris. The men and women of Bhutan worked in harsh conditions to help their country adapt to a rapidly changing environment. This is a big problem. It requires a lot of money. And without the support of Jeff, we would not be able to complete our tasks. Bhutan, we don't contribute anything to climate change. In fact, we are carbon sinkers. But still then, you are suffering the impact of climate change. The support rendered to us by Jeff is very helpful and on a timely basis. In addition to removing the threat of the GLOF, the Lake Tortomi project sets an example that is being replicated by other countries faced with the same challenge. Across the Hindu Kush, early warning systems are being installed with Jeff support. Should another glacial lake burst, these systems ensure that villagers will have time to evacuate to higher ground. As the glacial meltwater flows from the mountains to the sea, it can be used to generate clean energy. The Jeff has helped foster the growth of micro-hydro projects around the world. These small-scale projects add up to big results that can be measured both in the power they generate as well as the lives that are changed. Hundreds of projects like these in Nepal collectively generate some 2,500 megawatts of power. When we give access to energy to people in very remote and impoverished village, their life changes day and night. It's all possible because of electricity. Bangladesh is where many forces of climate change are colliding at once, and where the Jeff's efforts are making a real difference. These are the faces of climate refugees. People who used to have farms and cattle have been forced into crowded cities. Bangladesh is known as a country of rivers, most of which flow from the Himalayas to the Bay of Bengal. But increased flows from the Himalayas and excessive rains are swallowing once productive farmland, forcing people from their homes. Ironically, the same mountain-fed rivers that are causing the erosion also carry some two billion tons of sediment towards the sea, where the roots of mangrove forests catch the silt. Tens of thousands of new mangroves have been planted as a result of a Jeff investment in the hopes that coastal islands like Kukri Makri can withstand the rising sea level. Other islands like Kukri Makri that are vulnerable to the effects of climate change are implementing strategic programs funded by the Jeff that will have long-term benefits. The Pacific Adaptation to Climate Change Project is specifically targeted to help small islands like Samoa to build their climate resilience. This is a project which we provide finance through the Special Climate Change Fund to the small island states of the Pacific so that they can address their adaptation needs and help to build climate resilience. It focuses on coastal zone issues, on food security and water issues and help with soil conservation techniques, water conservation techniques, putting in devices which help to store and maintain water in periods of drought, helping to put in infrastructure which will protect the coastline uh, from sea level rise and the various different types of tides which these people get to protect their homes and their livelihoods. The chef does not focus on just one thing. It's a multi-area uh, focus and uh, we've been able to address uh, an in with an integrated approach uh, the assistance that we are receiving from the Global Environment Facility. In sub-Saharan Africa, nearly every element of the ecosystem is under stress. The desert is growing, lakes are drying up, 
and food resources are becoming scarce, not only for people, but for the majestic elephants of Mali. The desert elephants of Mali's Gorma region are the largest species of elephants on the planet. The herd of 350 is just half of what it was 10 years ago. As climate change affects rainfall and droughts lengthen, humans, livestock, and the elephants all compete for scarce resources. Watering holes are crowded, grasslands are overgrazed, and the acacia trees the elephants depend on for food are becoming harder to find. But today, with the help of Jeff-funded projects, the elephants and the rich biodiversity they depend upon are making a comeback. The 700-kilometer migratory route of the elephants has been protected. Village elders have designated grasslands and new watering holes have been created. The Jeff is scaling up its efforts in Africa. The Great Green Wall Initiative is a pan-African proposal to green the continent from west to east in order to battle desertification. Through this initiative, the Jeff has granted $100.8 million to participating countries to expand sustainable land and water management and adaptation in targeted landscapes and in climate vulnerable areas in West African and Sahelian countries. What we're trying to do is to make sure particularly to really focus on the most important areas. So for example, in biodiversity, we're trying to save the most important biodiversity like species as well as ecosystem around the world and identify the most priority area which has the biggest threats, the biggest problems, and also the biggest opportunity. All our work is aimed at improving the lives of people, at helping countries achieve sustainable development, and in that process, achieving global benefits. Forests cover a third of our planet. The forest biomass, including the soils, are a significant reservoir of carbon. Together, they store roughly twice the amount of carbon as the atmosphere. This whole biomass is sequestering carbon, is incorporating carbon from the atmosphere into the soil and into the biomass. Without that, we have larger emissions, we have worse global warming scenarios. The biodiversity decreases and the ecosystem processes change. When the ecosystem processes change, the structure of the forest changes. This affects climate. Climate affects the forest. Forests are disappearing at a rate of 13 million hectares per year, an alarming rate with global consequences. 20% of all global emissions now comes as a result of deforestation and land degradation. Most of these areas are already devastated by deforestation. We only have one shot. Whatever we do here will have consequence for the future. From the Amazon to Indonesia and the Congo, the Jeff is investing over $250 million to protect these carbon-storing ecosystems. It goes far beyond the preservation of the biodiversity. It also involves working with the communities. The Jeff has invested a lot of funding in protecting it for not only in the, the endemic species that live there, but also for the people who live around the area, for their livelihoods to make sure they can continue as the climate changes and to make sure that carbon that is stored in these natural ecosystems is protected so that we are sure that natural ecosystems are used in our battle against climate change. For the Jeff, projects aren't just Excel sheets. They're real, real people, real problems, and real solutions. What really excites me is this opportunity to put my technical and scientific knowledge into projects that are actually having an impact for the benefit of poorest of the poor in the developing countries. These projects which we finance help people 
They help to reduce poverty, they help to preserve the natural environment. We feel very, very attached to the projects which we finance. Looking ahead, we need to sort of mobilize more partners, have more meaningful discussion both at the global level and also at the community level. Twenty-two years ago, when the Jeff was created, we had a vision to make a real difference in the lives of people affected by the consequences of a warming planet. We have helped nations that are ill-equipped to deal with the effects of climate change. In our short history, we have been the catalyst for more than 3,500 projects in 165 countries, with a combined investment of $78 billion. We have this mandate with no other institution that have to work across the sectors. And that is really the source of the program that the, because the ecosystem is, is all integrated. We have so few actors that have the full integrated overarching picture and GF represents that. The GF also brings together so many different cultures, so many different people from emerging nations, from developing nations, from developed nations. It's a place where the right conversations, the real conversations, are taking place. The Jeff has really taken a very lead role in um, messaging around the common goods that belong to all of us. If we are to win the race to save the planet, it will require visionary ideas, strong alliances, and above all, the agility to move quickly. Resources are scarce. And if you're going to put money into an institution to make a difference in the environment, far better to do it in an institution that can touch all these issues at the same time than to take a rifle shot approach. The world is it's too complicated to do anything else. We need to really understand that business as usual is not good enough. We need to find a new way of integrating more and deepening our engagement, bringing more people, more stakeholders under the joint platform. Our forests, oceans, and animals, the air we breathe, the water we drink. Our planet is at the limit, and it's depending on us to save it. <laughs>